Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today, we're going to talk about July 29th, 2005. I know you're probably not Googling that right now, so I'll explain it. July 29th of 2005 was approximately, at this, at this moment, approximately 12 years ago. And that is when the last White Border set was released, and that was 9th edition. They have since printed everything in Black Border. Black Border does look cool. I'm not going to lie. However, there is a nostalgic part of me that loves that White Border. Now, obviously, my end goal here is to have a, as I've said before, an EDH deck with every possible legendary. So, I have a a binder, an unused general binder, every time the very first legend that I get of each one, I'll sleeve it up and put it in there, and on slow days when there's nothing else to do, I'll flip through there and see which general inspires me. And I looked at T. Takahashi, yeah, I probably muddled that, but anyway, and I thought, well, there's an awful lot of tap and prevent damage, and I thought about a cleric route, but, but clerics are best done in black-white, and I, I don't know. I looked at him, and the white border spoke to me. And I said, you know what? Tribal white border. Well, it's not really tribal, but uh, white border. Solid white border, green-white. I know it's doable, but is it going to be any good? Let's find out. Here we go. Anyway, uh, I wanted to start with Soul Ring here. I'm trying something different with the two cards so that you can actually still see the general at all times. Uh, with this particular deck, it doesn't really, you know, matter because it's not like his ability is a thing. So let's go through, since we've started with Soul Ring, we're going to go through the artifacts here. Felden's Cane. Obviously, there are milling strategies out there, fell, shuffling your library and your graveyard together back in. Hardly ever a bad thing. Feldon's Cane's been around, saving my ass for years now. And on the opposite, Turmoid's Crypt, we all know that the graveyard is just, in our format, it's an extension of your hand. Now some decks, I play some decks where I don't want a hand. I want it in the graveyard. There's more options there. Anyway, Turmoid's Crypt kind of gets you out of that bind. Uh, it can really, really get you out, out of like an anger situation or any of those cards that are only matter when they're in the graveyard. Uh, I still to this day have never seen Bridge from Below in an EDH game. Not to say it doesn't happen. But it could. Of course, Library of Lang is probably one of the best Nomax hand size things out there. Yeah, I th uh, there is some white border spell books, but I chose the library because forced discards, you get to pick, you can discard to the top of your library. And if it's a random discard, you get to look. So it, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. Now we're playing white and green, so we don't really you know, care a lot for the blue mage. So the defense grid, I don't have to preach how good defense grid it is. This is a great card. We all know it. And the ability to just dang near shut off an entire archetype is not a bad deal. Now, planar portal, that's right. Planar portal exists in white border. Planar portal's good. We all know it. It's a shame that uh, we don't have some way to really abuse it and maybe do it every turn. Oh, oh wait. Seedborn Muse is awesome too. Anyway, our last artifact is Arena of the Ancients. Because as good as Mr. Takahashi is, I don't give a shit about him. And he is our only legendary. Arena of the Ancients stops a lot of decks dead in their tracks. I mean, yes, it doesn't prov uh, it doesn't keep future legends entering tapped, but this thing just wrecks. Uh, I mean, when Captain Cisse goes to sleep at night and she has nightmares, 
they take place in the arena of ancients, okay? Anyway, uh, I only have three instants in the deck. Of course, we have Naturalize and Disenchant because, well, artifacts and enchantments are, in fact, a thing. N nothing sucks worse than being hosed by one and you can't do anything about it. So, I I've run two of those. And, of course, a sword. I, I, I feel like the sword to plowshare is something that, you know, you have to run. Kind of like the Wrath of God. It's one of those things that I feel like I'm representing white green white border here. I feel like I gotta do it. Now, I chose Desert Twister. I, I, I'll wait for y'all to stop laughing, okay? I love Desert Twister. Yes, it's a six mana Vindicate. But it's a six mana Vindicate in a color that shouldn't exist. This is in white black color pie only now yes it started off in green it is a color break bigger than shit Morrow hates the fact this card exists and I love the fact that it doesn't spell out what it can just a permanent destroy a permanent planeswalkers didn't exist back then it doesn't matter I can nuke a walker nickel bolus you're gone Anyway, oh, by the way, here's uh, something kind of sad. There has never been a white border planeswalker. Just saying. We got creeping mold here again. It's kind of redundancy with our, our naturalized disenchant thing. The fact that you can hit a land doesn't matter a whole lot. I mean, homeward path, we don't really care about. Uh, Maybe some Maze of the Ith I, I don't know. But mainly it's just more artifact enchantment redundancies. Hurricane, because let's face it, sometimes it just wins games. Sometimes you need a lot of flyers to die. Sometimes I've hurricane for one to get out from underneath a Pegasus problem. Anyway, really like me some Hurricane. But not as much as I love my gift of the States. Now, Gift of Estates is, it's a, it's a one-time land tax. This is more or less my land tax replacement. I should be running land tax. This deck needs a land tax. However, Brian don't have a land tax. I, I, I don't know what happened years ago. I guess I got rid of them. I don't know. But Gift of Estates, good card, one-turn land tax. It's, that's how you know a card is powerful. When years later, they print a one-turn version of an enchantment, and it costs double what the enchantment is for one turn. Anyway, Nature's Resurgence. Like me some Nature's Resurgence, because this is, here again, it's card draw in green. Now, granted, it's okay for green to have card draw, as long as it's tied to their creatures. But now, is it just me? Or does this feel a little more black? It does. I think maybe if they had waited till like nowadays, this may actually be like a green black card. I don't know, but this feels like it should have some black in it. Now, before we get to the enchantments, let's get to the creature base. Here again, a lot of this is just uh, who's who and the good stuff of years gone by. We're going to start with the uh, uh, mana ramp, I guess. Wood Elves is good. I like me some Wood Elves. Utopia Tree. Yeah, yeah. Utopia Tree is another copy of Bird of Paradise. I'm looking and I don't see my Bird of Paradise. I don't see my bird. I am presenting you an illegal deck, people. Uh, this is apparently a 99 card deck because I have a bird of paradise, but as I remember the last game that I played, somebody um, stole it from me. <laughs> I mean, like in-game, 
they took it and they were using it and they were making like blue mana with it, which really, really bothered me because, you know, it's a bird. Anyway, FYI, mental note, the card that goes right here should be a bird of paradise. Anyway, Utopia Tree, another bird of paradise, a little bit bigger butt, not that it matters. Finhorn Elves, a lot of people don't know that exists in White Border, uh, but the Finhorn Elves there, that is the Deck Master. Years ago, there was a box set of John Finkel versus Richard Garfield, and they had pumped it up for like, you know, months ahead of time, and it was in the Duelist, that was a uh, actual paper magazine back in the day, and to both of them had built decks, it was really fun. I liked that they did that. I loved, loved Richard Garfield. Because John Finkel, as I remember, was a little nervous about getting pitted up against Richard Garfield. I know when I played Richard Garfield, he stomped me. I mean, curb stomped me. Anyway, but Richard Garfield had, had the best line ever. He said, well, of course I'm not supposed to win. I'm not even on the Pro Tour. Anyway, uh both of those decks came out. There was like four foil cards because foils were new at that time. And they were Black Border, Necropotence, Incinerate, Lugoif, bunch of stuff like that. Anyway, it white borders some cards that aren't previously, that don't otherwise exist in white border. Anyway, enough about that story. Lanwar Elves, obviously, here we go. I think that's it for my. Oh, nope. I've got the Elder, because you got to have the Elder. He taps for... T this is a colored Worn Power Stone. Yes, it dies due literally every removal ever, but that's, in my mind, that's how I kind of work this in there, is he's a Worn Power Stone. Now, Utility Creatures. The Sex Monks. I'm, uh, Uktabi Orangutan. Now, I don't know how... This got past the art department. I mean, wow. I know I've talked about this before. By the way, if y'all want a really good laugh, you look at the background of this art and then go to like the uncard, uh, Uktabi Kong. And the, the Uktabi Kong card shows the same two monkeys in the background, but I believe one is pregnant. And if I'm not mistaken, Uktabi Kong takes two creatures to make a new creature. Anyway, funny to go look it up. Uktabi Kong. We also have Lugoif. Here again, I talked about Lugoif earlier. Love the Lugoif. This was the very first Goif, by the way, Pete. Uh, Ice Age brought it to us, and it was amazing. Everybody loved it. In the invention of Type 2, he actually did some things, because if you can imagine this guy in a standard format with Wrath of God, and then they kept printing whiteboard wipes. Yeah. It's pretty good. He uh, he got eclipsed later on by, of course, the his, his Tarmo brethren. But this was the very first one. This was Goyf 1.0. Now, White Knight, black is a very, very popular color. You get protection from, I'm going to, it, the math tells us it's 20% of the field, but it feels like it's just more than that because multicolor is a thing. River Boa has two abilities that matter. Island Walk and Regenerate, both of which have kind of fallen out of favor recently, but the effect that he can regenerate and that he is not blockable by, you know, one of your worst enemies, it's pretty neat. I gotta have the Morrow. I love the card. Originally brought to you in Mirage. Uh, this is one of the. Uh, if y'all don't know the the story behind this card, I'm not gonna go into it at length here because it's a really really long story. Anyway, it's a good card. We have Cockatrice because. Death Touch and Flying is a thing. Yeah, that's an awful long... It's actually... I think it may be improved Death Touch because it doesn't have to actually deal the damage. It just has to get blocked by it. So, 
It ain't even got to deal the damage. To Beast of Burden, I got to speed this up. This is going to be long here. To Beast of Burden, obviously, a lot of creatures on the board. He's going to be fine. We're going to go through Killer Bees. Decent Flyer. Speaking of decent flyers, where would we be without Sarah and Blinding? I even went up to the Archangel. Seven mana for a 5-5 five, five Vigilant Flyer maybe a little much, but I really like this 5-5 five, five because there are times when you just need to punch through and deal those last few points of damage. This guy will do it. Now, Dirt Cow Worm. This is anybody plays a land. Wow. Multiplayer. I'm surprised everybody's not rocking this guy. Everybody may be, and I just don't know it. Now, Argothian Pixies sounds like a flying creature, is not a flying creature. However, it does, in fact, not care about artifacts. They can block artifact things all day long, not care. Now, let's get to the meat potatoes of the deck here, 16 minutes into this golly. I apologize, this is going to be a long one. White border that's kind of, I love me some white border. Enchantress. 1-1 one, one for each, yeah, I know, I went there. And then we have the card draw Enchantress. Now, the, the card draw Enchantress is, yeah, I mean, it's pretty decent. But you've got to have enough enchantments to make this Joker work. So, first off, seven of these cards here, I'm not really going to, Talk a lot about them. White, blue, black, red, green, artifact, pick a color. They're all they're all circles. Yeah, I know. But let's face it, this is white border. We have very <laughs> very limited card pool. Don't have what the black border world has, so hey, here we go. And those are all enchantments. They can save your life. They can get you where you need to be. Enchantments that uh, fix your mana there. We have, uh, let's see, we're just going to go through. Ain't got a lot of dudes, like I said, but this pumps up a dude. Divine Transformation, decent card. Fecundity. Fecundity, really like me some fecundity. Creature dies. Obviously, we have a pacifism. A kismet, Blanchwood Armor. Yeah, only half the deck is green, but this provides enough of a bump. Even if it, if it gives you three or four, hey, that's three or four you didn't have. And still energy to go on my Bird of Paradise that is, you know, somewhere. Um, I guess you could also put it on your Elder or whatever else that taps. Primal Order. We're playing with all basic lands, okay? Primal Order can single-handedly win you games. Greater Good can draw you some cards. Glorious Anthem is going to protect your team as well as, you know, that is going to protect one dude. Island Sanctuary to get you around some uh, attackers if you need it to be. Vernal Bloom doubles your green. Ivory Mask is going to protect your ass. Rowan. This, actually, since we are playing kind of heavy with 30-something lands, high 30s, I believe, but Rowan, you can get there. I mean, it's, it, it's really, really good. The higher the stat gets, the more out of focus it gets. So we're going to, we've only got two cards left. And most importantly, we got our Enchant Worlds. Concordant Crossroads gives everything you got, hey, oh, I'm sorry, it gives everything on the board haste. This can be a double-edged sword. Well, I say double-edged sword like it's a bad thing. Who the hell would want a single-edged sword? Anyway, Concordant Crossroads, good card. Most importantly, if there's some old school in your meta, it single-handedly kills Abyss, Neither Void, um, any of those other enchant worlds. So, Revelation never seems like a bad thing to do. You don't want to overcommit creatures if you know your opponent's sitting on a wrath. Anyway, that's what I've got for 
Mr. Takahashi here. I appreciate y'all watching. Sorry about the length. Let me know what you think about white border magic. It makes me excited. It makes my... Well, never mind. I love me some white border magic. I appreciate y'all watching. Comment, subscribe, share it. Let me know. We appreciate you watching. But right now, it is time for a shuffle and a cut.